Hey guys, welcome back to another review Starlight video. Um, I think this has been, this topic has been requested a lot of times, not just on my channel but as well as Reddit. Um, this video is not about how to perform in PvP because if you want to know how to perform in PvP, just refer to one of my previous PvP videos. However, this video will be more on how to be competitive. Um, so I just like to start off the video by saying that this guide was created based on the condition that you, as a player, you either aspire to be competitive or you are just like frustrated at your inability to climb the ladder or like for example you're just stuck in bronze or you're stuck in silver for whatever reason. Um, I didn't think that this would be a problem so knowing that there's actually a bunch of you guys out there who are enduring the silver meta, um, I decided to create this video. So as such, the basic requirement is to have at least at least one 4 stars DPS and one 4 stars tank. You need one of each of these. There is no way around it. Um, if you do not have it, uh, you should consider re-rolling your account. Not to worry though, um, as the game is new, it is very easy to catch back up. It is better to start over than to stress out on your gameplay. Okay, so I know it's a very fish, uh, it's a very touchy subject about re-rolling your account. However, um, if you're gonna watch this because your, you feel like your competitiveness is lacking, uh, this is pretty much the first step to take. All right. Okay, so the reason why I say you should have at least one four stars DPS and one four stars tank is because the stats of your four stars character completely outshine the stats of your three stars character. Okay, so like. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I do not have a very good example for you because my my main team is like completely built up already. But you can take my word for it that uh, based on my experience, I okay my first account I created, um, I ran with three star characters, <clears throat> and I even ran with the basic this girl. I even ran with her for my very first account. Um, and then what I realized is that when I pulled a four star character, level them up to the same stats, level them up to the same rank. Um, the stat difference was about 30%, so it's really quite huge. So, uh, the reason why you want one 4 stars DPS is because that will be your main guy who's gonna kill your opponents, and why you want a 4 stars tank is because a 4 stars tank naturally makes a 3 stars tank irrelevant. A 4 stars tank would naturally be so much more tanky just because she is 4 stars. And I say she because everyone here is a girl. Um, also, it is not impossible to re-roll, in case you're worried about re-rolling, it's not impossible to re-roll for one 4 stars DPS and one 4 stars tank. When you start the game, you have 4,500 uh, diamonds. You can immediately roll for the 1,500, right? There's this uh, step up roll, 1,500, and if you do not get a net 5, doesn't matter. Go for the 4,000, I mean, go for the 3,000 one after that, the second step up, and from there, you would be guaranteed a net 4. And given your net 4, if it's either a tank or a DPS, um, you can use your selector, the redo selector after that, just get another 3,000 diamonds, and you can select uh, what you need. So for example, if you've got a tank, good for you, you can just go to the selector and select any one of the DPSs. So of course, the, the most recommended DPSs are like Juna, uh, Musketeer Juna, and of course Yachio. These are the two that you can select. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, my, <coughs> my throat is crazy again. <coughs> or you could also opt for um, Pirate Shizuha. Right? They're all equally good. Um, <coughs> okay, so 4 stars are strictly better than 3 stars. So naturally, your tank has to be 4 stars. And your main DPS has to be 4 stars. Okay, let's quickly move on to the next part of the, the guide. Um, a 3 star tank cannot perform as a main tank. Like I've said, their stats are generally a lot poorer, however, they can still be used as a sub-tank. What a sub-tank is, is for example, you have a main tank in front, let's say a Maya or Michiru. For example, you have a, you, you lucked out and you got a Michiru. Uh, you can actually put like a Lala Finn as a sub-tank. So your first position is going to be Michiru and then follow up with, with uh, Lala Finn. Why Lala Finn, um, I'll explain in just a bit. And moving on to the 3 stars DPS. Uh, three star DPS generally cannot perform as a main DPS because, firstly, their stats is so much lower, so they are not going to be as effective as a four stars DPS. However, they can still be used as a support DPS. 
So what the support DPS is like for example just look at um <clears throat> okay I do not have Sun Nation uh Nana but Sun Nation Nana is one of the really really good choices because she's a dream type and also she has a I think she has two AoEs if I'm not mistaken. I know her alt is an AoE. Uh you can use her to clear the enemy's evade. If they do have evades, you can actually use characters like Sun Nation ban uh, Banana to clear their evade. And that this is where <coughs> Lalafin comes in as well. Even though she's a tank, she also has double double uh, team white AoEs, which is very very good for clearing away the enemy's evades. A lot of players like to play with evades nowadays. Um, it's no surprise. Evades are really really good on DPSs. <coughs> so you just use <coughs> sorry. So you just use her as the evade clearer. Um, and of course. If you do not have Lalafin, you know what, your, your roles completely suck. You do not have anything that can act as an evade remover. You know what, there is also this. She's just a 2 stars, but Ichi Otonashi from the Rinmeikan Girls School. <coughs> Let's look at her skills. She has a brilliant attack, which is very nice. And of course, she has a dex and critical damage up to allies. Dex is your crit rate. So crit rate and crit damage is really quite good. Um, not to mention... High damage, normal defense down to all enemies. So with this, she can work very well with, um, let's say, Shizuha, Pirate Shizuha. Because Pirate Shizuha does normal damage and it does uh, team-wide normal damage. So it's a very good combo. You can use Ichi to remove the evades and follow up with your Pirate Shizuha to actually do the significant damage. Okay, so it's all about planning what your team is going to, what, what, what the main strategy of your team is. I'm not going to go into the strategies for this video. I'm just going to give you like some advice on what you can use and also let's not forget this girl exists okay she's just a three stars Fumi <coughs> Ghost Patrol Fumi she has high attack power however okay I mean she's she's an attack she's a DPS okay she's a pure DPS her sustainability is really really bad and one bad thing is that she's up in front so if you're gonna have a sub tank she's not gonna be that useful anymore because she's like filling up the third role of a off tank kind of thing uh, so if you're gonna use Fumi, you may not want to use a sub tank. You may just want to use a main tank and that's it. Why she's so good is because of these two skills. Um, medium damage and normal defense down to enemy the highest attack power. And then follow up her climax, high damage and X power down to enemy the highest attack power. I mean act power. This is really good. Um, if you do not know, she can one shot any Yachiyo in the arena. Yes, she just need to press her act. Boom, the enemy's Yachiyo is dead. That's it. It's just like that. Of course, it doesn't have to be Yachiyo, it can be enemies, uh, Musketeer Juna or whatever. As long as it's a, it's a glass cannon, boom, they're dead. Uh, so yeah, she's also really, really usable as a 3 stars. So, okay, let's say, you know what, your your role's kind of like, it's not it's not bad, but <clears throat> let's say the only 4 star DPS you have is Phantom Nana. Okay, and <clears throat> of course, Phantom Nana isn't an AoE damage dealer. She only does damage to like the front enemy or like the front enemy group, so you're not gonna like sweep the entire enemy lineup in one go. Um, if you do pull her, all hope is not lost. You know what? You can actually <coughs> use characters like uh, Christine Juna or Red Duke Claudine because what they do is that they have a skill that reduces. Normal, uh, normal defense down and special defense down to the front enemy so they will be a really really good combo with your let's say your your phantom banana you just need to defense down and then your phantom banana can one shot can literally one shot the enemy's tank my, my phantom banana has one shot many maya tendos in the arena many even in platinum rank it's it's really just a matter of pressing the climax and the maya tendo is dead just like that um so yeah Defense down, special defense down, really good combo. So it doesn't matter if you know what you you don't have like a uh, uh, Yachio, right? It doesn't matter as long as you kill your tank, their entire lineup is dead. Um, so whoever defeats the enemy's tank first actually stands a very good chance at winning in the PvP fight itself. All right, so <clears throat> uh, some other options, right, for single target nukes that are really really good. If you do have them, good for you. Uh, one is Celestial Akira, uh, another one is Musketeer Hikari, and of course, not to forget, the uh, Black Lion Karuko. 
Um, alright, moving on to memoirs. We are done with the characters, by the way, so, like, yeah, if you need, if you need to recap, rewatch the video again. Um, moving on to memoirs. So, what kind of memoirs should you be equipping? Okay, for your DPS, okay, your damage dealers with brilliance attacks. Brilliance attacks are, like, for example, <coughs> all my characters have brilliance attacks. This, their second skill would look like an up arrow with a golden thingy. Um, as long as your character has this, you can more or less just give them uh, initial brilliance prints, like uh, say this, get 22 brilliance <coughs> from the start. This is it's just a one-time thing. The reason being is when you enter PvP, um, PvP fights, they are a bit different from your campaign fights in the sense that... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Damn, my throat, man. Seriously. Uh, the difference between your PvP fights and your campaign fights is that in PvP, you have a boosted initial brilliance. So I think it's like boosted to 50%. And with an initial brilliance, it doesn't have to be 22%. Um, it works the same with uh, 16... Sorry, not 22%. 22 brilliance. It works the same with 16 brilliance as well. Um, <coughs> if you drop a 16 brilliance at the start and you top it off with a brilliance attack, you would... I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you will hit a full 100% uh, climax bar. Which means that on the first turn, you already can trigger your climax. I mean, technically, you can only trigger it on the second turn, but it's still a very big advantage. So, for characters with brilliant attacks, give them initial brilliance, like this, or give them climax. Climax act power. Where are you? Climax act power. Yeah, there we go. Climax act power. Because um, let's say you do not have any more brilliance prints. This would still be pretty useful. I mean, it will take you an extra turn to reach Climax, but at least you're going to do something better, right? Um, I generally... <coughs> <coughs> generally, I suggest against <coughs> uh, brilliant gains per turn, because firstly, let's just compare this with uh, something that gives brilliance at the same tier. Look, 16 brilliance at the start, and this is 2 brilliance each turn. You, you technically need to wait 8 whole turns for this to be equally useful as this. So this is completely useless. It's really completely useless. Um, <coughs> uh, and let's see, yes, moving on. Alright, for your DPS characters without brilliance attacks, this is going to be a bit different. Because they lack brilliance attacks, they are not going to charge up their climax that soon. So in order for them to be relevant during the period where they are not actually charging up their climax that efficiently, you might want to opt with opt for prints like Fortitude <coughs> to at least make sure that they survive till they can drop their climax. This is very important. They need to survive. Uh, secondly, you can also give them something like... Uh, where are you? Not critical, not critical. Okay. Um, damage dealt. Yeah, you can give them damage dealt, or you can even just give them uh, damage dealt is self explanatory, or you can just give them evade, right? Because with evade, uh, they are more likely to survive and they are more likely to last till they can trigger their climax. Alright, so for tanks, lastly, okay, for tanks, um, generally you just want to stick with evade or fortified. There we go, fortified. Sorry, not 45, 42, 42. Uh, you do not want prints like barriers because uh, honestly, these prints are quite useless. And I mean, memoirs, okay, not prints, but I just call them prints, okay, for some reason. These prints are quite useless. 750 is not going to protect you from anything. Even a normal 1 AP skill is going to break through this barrier. It's not going to do anything. It's, you're, you're better off with like 42, where you can actually tank a huge climax hit. Like for example, if you use Maya Tendo, you can just give her a fortitude, and she will soak everything that a phantom banana can deal at her. I mean, hopefully, hopefully you don't get you don't proc that fortitude on like her third hit or something. <coughs> okay, moving on. Let's go. Let's go. <coughs> Review song. Okay. So what would I recommend? Oh no. How do I look at my review songs? Oh yeah, I can just do this. Okay, what would I recommend for you? Um, <coughs> for New players like yourself, I would highly recommend flat act power. So something like this. Flat act power. Okay, it's not like a percentage. I'm not sure whether there's a percentage to be honest, but it has to be flat. <coughs> and of course, 
the best is have a CR in front, which means climax review. That means that uh, this effect only triggers during a climax itself when your when your team is like there's a song going on and stuff like that. Cause that the bonus will be a lot higher than when it's off climax. Like let me try let me just try to find one with uh, no okay this is even better 90 <coughs> okay there you go um okay firstly sorry about my throat it's, it's kind of annoying i know but um it's harder for me you look at this without the cr it's kind of useless fire attack power fire attack power who cares right but if it's this this is really something okay so you 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 want to push for your climax asap so that you can you can enjoy these benefits um however if let's say you got so lucky and you managed to pull a bunch of characters that are all of the same element okay all of the same element like let's say um you managed to pull all space type maya right and you got a bunch of space types as well then good for you you may opt for something like like there <coughs> cr uh element stage girl damage dot plus something this is also not bad but that's only this is only good if you're if all your DPS are of the same element, then this will be really, really incredibly useful. If not, just go for the flat, the flat act power. That's good enough. Make sure it's make sure it has a CR in front as well. <clears throat> However, if you are kind of like uh, risky, right, and you want to fight the meta, then you could opt for something like special defense up flat. Okay, make sure it's flat. And make sure there's a CR special defense up. So like if you're gonna predict that the Yachio on the other team is going to go, you can proc proc your climax uh climax act or climax review. Just proc your climax review, then you immediately get this special defense up. It's like your whole team is like sheltered for quite a significant amount of damage to be honest. 65 is a lot, but it goes up to like I think 90 as well. I'm not sure whether I have something that's incredible. Um hmm. I don't think I have one actually. I really need to fuse one. Yep, I really really need to work on getting one good one. Percentages isn't so good for starting for the start because like even at my stage, my I think like my tankiest character, which is Michiru, doesn't even have seven hundred special defense. So like ten percent of seven hundred is just seventy. It's a lot better to just equip one that has like eighty. It's it's a lot better. So like for, for the early game at least flat stats are going to be a lot more useful. I'm not sure about the end game though. And of course, <coughs> uh, if you really want to challenge the meta that much, uh, instead of opting for special defense, you could even go for something like um, some kind of defense, like CR, dream damage received minus 7%, because dream comes from Yachio, Yachio is a dream type, uh, or even moon. Moon types are quite prominent as well, like Phantom Banana, um, Black Lion, Kauruko. There's, I think, I think there's quite a few actually. All right, moving on to the last bit of my video, leveling. Okay, so how should you decide who gets levels, who gets skill panels, who gets potentials? Um, the general idea is if your tank dies, your entire team dies. As such, as you can see how I'm doing this, my tank gets all the priority. So level bond. Um, skill panels my tank gets the priority she gets the first for everything like the first character that goes rank 7 the first character that goes 5 stars uh, the first character that goes level 70 that's my tank and <coughs> this is so prominent because you would definitely encounter some comms with double tanks and you realize that comms with double tanks tend to sometimes you just tend to lose to them more frequently that is because even though you kill their first tank, they still have a freaking second tank that's just like sitting there and ready to like take the rest of your hits. Um, so even if you really use up all your resources and you manage to clear all his DPS, you still have to deal with that tank. Okay, and by that time, I'm pretty sure the trade will be quite even. Your team will be like half dead as well, so the tank is just gonna plow through the rest of your DPS very easily. So double tank comms are a thing in PvP, so that's that just emphasizes the importance of of a strong tank. So for me, I only run one tank, so she has to be extremely tanky. She has to survive till 
after the climax, at least, after the first climax. So yeah, uh, if you want advice on PvP itself, unfortunately this video is not going to do that for you. You can refer to my other videos, uh, I think it's just like the previous two videos, it's just like a PvP video, and you'll see the kind of choices that I make when I'm running my PvP, uh, what are my actions that I prefer taking, like for example, okay, for example, I would always click the brilliance on my DPSs and I'll, I probably wouldn't even use my tank to do anything except for maybe buffing my, my team up. So yeah, you know, go check them out. It'll be more, it'll be more self-explanatory over there. Um, if you found this video useful, I, I, I did put in quite a bit of effort into making this video. Uh, hopefully it's not terrible. Hopefully it's up to expectations of like the other veterans. I'm not a veteran myself, but I'm not a veteran, okay? But I hope the veterans can agree that the content is of quality. So if you did find this information useful, you know what? Um, let me know by leaving a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you have not. And of course, if you have any other comments or questions, just leave it down below. I will respond to it. Um, and I'll probably put this on Reddit as well. So if you see this, see this there, you can ask me the questions on Reddit as well. It's totally fine. I'll get back to you ASAP. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one.